What is going on traders? Welcome back to the Traveling Trader. Let us get right into it. Crypto market cap currently at around 133 bill. Not much change from the last time we spoke. There are a couple of notables here. Litecoin up almost 20% in BTC value over the last week. BNB, of course, this is our, our secret nuclear weapon here. I'll go over BNB in a second, but we've been scaling into BNB since November. If you want access to the trade alerts, by the way, link is in the description. Another one that caught my eye was ABBC coin. I don't know what the fuck that is, but it is up 172 percent uh, over the the last week. It doesn't even trade on an exchange that I'm very familiar with either. Really, in terms of the top 50, that is it. Raven coin just outside the top 50, 106 percent over the last week, and we did send out a number of trade alerts for Raven coin, and we just sent one out recently again, and I'll show you why in a second. So let us get right into our analysis, and then I wanted to discuss a and actually a really. Uh, I, I think it's a significant news story as it relates to the merging of cryptocurrency and the corporate world with Starbucks accepting Bitcoin. And they think that this could happen sometime this year. I'll go over this news story towards the end. So let me just get right into the analysis and then we'll cover this right here. So Bitcoin, not much has changed in my analysis. You do have this ascending triangle pattern. It is still, you know, within this tight range. Bitcoin volatility is is actually rather low. If you look at it here, 2.93%. And that is that is on the low side historically. Uh, the lowest we've gotten to recently was back in, in November where we were in the in the one percentage point range. But, you know, it's still in a period of low volatility. And what that means is that, you know, usually a coin or an asset can't trade in a low volatility period for a long time on the open market. And we will tend to see a breakout in either direction from this this lull period, right? Like this period of, of inaction, I should say. So the 50 and the 100 are flirting with with converging there isn't really yeah i mean again as i said in my last video there isn't a reason for me to trade bitcoin now i you can easily wait for confirmation of a breakout from this triangle or you can even set just based on precedent going all the way back to november if you wanted to engage in a little more of a speculative risky trade you can set a short at around 4100 or 4200 either on bitmex or bitfinex or whatever platform you short with uh, you know for a a potential move down and with leverage obviously that is multiplied your gains and your losses are multiplied by the leverage factor but you know that is for a riskier trade either way there's a number of, of ways to play this but whether you're on the short side or long side in my view there really isn't a reason to enter bitcoin while it's in this range here because you know, you're not getting a clear picture or, or or confirmation that a certain move is about to happen. So I'm not I'm currently not swing trading Bitcoin because there's no need to looking at Litecoin. This is one that I did send out a trade alert for as well. If you recall my video from Monday, Litecoin was at around forty five dollars. And I said that I'm really bullish on Litecoin. It is now up at around fifty five dollars, almost a 20 percent gain, I should say, from uh, from where we were back uh, when when I did the video just a couple of days ago. Yeah, a little over 20% gain. So I continue to stay bullish on Litecoin. Obviously, you see the 50 and the 100 crossover. It is comfortably trading above the 200 day moving average. The halvening is coming up in, in August. There's great volume. The MACD is trending upwards. The VFI is bouncing off of the zero trending upwards as well. There's a lot more room to grow on the RSI. And obviously we are, uh, you know, ap approaching these FIB extension levels as well. And the one level being at conservatively at $66.5, which is my midterm target for Litecoin. Looking at ethereum ethereum is trading it, it formed a symmetrical triangle broke out and now it is trading above it bouncing off of what used to be the resistance of the symmetrical triangle which is now the support the 50 and the 100 did cross the 50 is now slightly above the 100 so it has converged and created this golden cross here uh, i suspect that the 200 day will be the achilles heel for ethereum for a while because it hasn't really comfortably traded over the 200 day since March 2018. We did blip over it just a little bit going all the way back to uh, May, but that was only for a couple of weeks before falling back down. So I do think that 200 will be the Achilles heel for Ethereum. Now, if we do break uh, below the 
back into the range of the symmetrical triangle, then we could see further downside action. But but currently it looks like it's sustaining support at around that level. The Ethereum Constantinople fork has already concluded, and that also included a reduction in the block rewards in the same way that Litecoin is going to experience in, in August. But it was, I think, only by a third instead of half. Still, over time, you would suspect that the intrinsic value of Ethereum is going to go up because of that reduction in block reward. So Ethereum might be a good long-term hold at these levels. I still would like to see what it does over a few more candles if it can sustain above the 50, 100, as well as above what used to be the resistance of this symmetrical triangle. Looking at XRP, now XRP is an interesting one. So XRP, there is a range in XRP a support range which it is is close to to being in but it's between like 26 cents and 30 cents and change right you see here every time it, it hits is going all the way back to september it bounces up but xrp if you put on the bollinger bands which i currently have on here you'll see that let me just remove this because it looks rather messy at the moment but if you look at the the bollinger bands you'll see XRP trading in this really tight range. This is against uh, US dollar, but you'll see it trading in this extremely tight range with no volume. The MACD has been flat for almost three months, which is something that is, is, is actually quite rare, especially in a coin or an asset that has you know one of the top market caps. And we see a similar range happening in a similar volume level as well as a similar MACD level happening back in, you know, going all the way back to middle 2017 to end of 2017. So XRP is back to trading in this tight range and you could take a chance on XRP in my opinion. This is not financial advice, but you could take a chance on XRP being that it is in this tight range and it has, you know, bounced off of, of this key support range going all the way back to, to August. And it, it, it seems like a pretty low risk trade, especially if you have a stop limit set. But, you know, you could just hold on to XRP until XRP gets more volume and we see a rally because currently it, it cannot, it will not sustain, mark my words, it will not sustain this tight range forever, right? It could be a few months as we saw back here going all the way back to uh, 2017. This lasted from May to really to December. So, you know, a little over seven months or eight months or so. And that it could sustain for that long, but it's not going to be forever. So you could hold it and sit on it and keep a, a stop limit uh, to protect your losses or protect you from losses. Sorry. So that is BTC, LTC, Ethereum, and XRP. Ravencoin, I told you that, that I'd go over. We bought Ravencoin when it broke this level here, when it broke out and wrote it all the way it really did not have a period of consolidation, but wrote it all the way until around 700 sats before it declined over 10% and our stop limits hit for profit, right? We made about 92%. We were up 92% before the stop limit hit. It did create this bull flag here, and I did send out another alert uh, yesterday saying that if we broke out of this bull flag, then you can enter a position and expect to ride it to 700. We're seeing some resistance at 700 because that is where the recent strong resistance is, right? And we will continue to see this and it will take some effort for a coin like Raven, which was, you know, rather unknown prior to this pump. Uh, it will take some effort for it to pierce through this level. And if it doesn't, then, you know, you could buy back at the, the retracement point either the point two between the 0.382 and 0.236 fib level is what it's looking that like now based off of, of precedence and lastly i'll go over bnb bnb has just been a monster for us as i said it, it was our secret nuclear weapon i started scaling into bnb going all the way back to november after it broke this level right here it, it formed kind of a, a rounding bottom broke out of that level, started scaling into BNB, all kinds of golden crosses happening, and it really has not stopped. It hasn't seen any correction periods uh, on its on its path to where it's at now, which is at around 366,500 sats. Now, it, it is an uncharted territory. This is an all-time high for BNB in BTC price, right? So we have to use something like the FIB extension to project what its future prices can be. It already crossed 
1.272, which was at around 301,000 sats, the 1.618, which was at around 350,000 sats, and the next target up is the 2-fib level, which is at around 403,000 sats, and I think we will get there. It's, it's rather obvious based on momentum based on volume that we will get there now obviously nothing in the market is guaranteed and we can easily see a fall from grace but you know all points all indications currently based on you know moving averages based on volume based on momentum indicators says that we will eventually get to you know 403,000 at least at some point so bnb continues to be a nuclear weapon and actually a hedge against btc so when btc is stagnating or declining you are seeing bnb just rising like crazy up 140 percent since november all right looking at our news story this is what i wanted to go over starbucks accepting bitcoin and could create one grant one grande headache and the reason that they're saying that uh, this could spell a headache for starbucks and any other retailer really that accepts crypto is because of the issue of tax so tax reporting and tax reporting at least in the u.s say you know you spend uh, or or you know Starbucks charges a certain amount for a cup of coffee and then you know by the the year end when they're doing their taxes uh, the bitcoin the price of bitcoin has parabolically surged and it is now at a different value well Starbucks is going to have to report that gain in its taxes and it could be cumbersome on you know a zillion microtransactions. Starbucks by the way is one of those companies that receive significant equity in backed and backed obviously being the digital asset ecosystem that is supposed to make bitcoin payments or crypto payments a lot more ubiquitous. So what is the proposed solution around this? Well, we already have a solution around this as it relates to foreign currency. So if I'm on if I'm in Europe and say I buy something in, in euros and then the, the value of euros goes up. Well, the tax law says that as long as the gains per transaction are $200 or less, you are good to go. There is an ex exemption called de minimis exemption, which says that, you know, micro gains in, in foreign transaction exchanges are not to be counted on your tax forms. So that could be the same thing, except for currently with Bitcoin, every single transaction is taxable. And, you know, all that we need to do really is implement the sort of taxation that we see with foreign currencies onto Bitcoin payments. They're going to have to figure it out because this is going to happen. So hopefully it happens this year, as this article says that that Starbucks is planning on rolling this out this year. And that could be a, a great sign for Bitcoin and, and Bitcoin's price as well, especially if, you know, this is considered part of the backed platform. It would it would make backed a, a for sure launch this year. Anyway, that is it for this video. There are a couple of stocks I'm watching, mainly Netflix, uh, Walt Disney. I'm also looking at, at Home Depot. If you want access to the trade alerts, we did add a stock section here to the trade alerts. So with the diamond traders and above level, you also get access to the stock trade alerts, not just the crypto trade alerts. And if you need help on finding out which platform to trade on, just hit me up and uh, you know either leave it in the comment or hit me up on the Discord and I can direct you as to which platform that, that that i use leave a comment leave a thumbs up if you got anything out of this video subscribe if you want access to the trade alerts or if you need help with one-on-one -on -one coaching on your technical analysis stay safe out there peace